Uh, thank you. All right, recording in progress. Hi, Cass. Hi, Shelly. How are you? I'm so good to see you. It's so good to be seen. And um, life is coming back to some, Slowly but some surely, yes. of normal. Yeah. So, um, you know, I told everybody in my little bloglet a little bit about you, but I assume if they're watching this, they probably know a little bit about you and they're interested and have been interested. So um, where are you now? I, literally. I am in Warrendale, Pennsylvania. Okay. Uh, we got here last night uh, we? and I'm playing, uh, we, my band. Uh, okay. I am, I'm, I'm, I'm doing some live shows and we are at a venue called Jurgles in Warrendale, Pennsylvania. It's about half an hour outside of Philadelphia, uh, Pittsburgh. Okay. And uh, first show tonight um, and for my band, but it's, it's a little different. Uh, it's a little different flavor for me because I do only utopia music in this, okay. in, in this particular configuration. So the band that I used to be in with Todd Rundgren, Roger Powell, and Willie Wilcox was Utopia, and uh, and and there was a a, a big call for uh, that music uh, for the fans to to experience that music again. So I put together a band, and I come, I go out, and I play all Utopia music for a few and shows I here. I remember and there. it well because I just have to say, back in the eighties. Mm -hmm. I was in New York mm -hmm. and the first I heard of Utopia was a song called Love of the Thinker. Oh, really? And wow, I, that's amazing. That's a deep cut. That's but I was obsessed with that song. And you sang oh, wow. that song? Didn't you sing yes, that? Yes, I did. Yeah, we and do that I, in the show. We do that song in the show. I was obsessed with it and I still am. And I used to smoke and get on uh -huh. my 10 speed with uh -huh. headphones on and right up Broadway wow. to my friend's house on the Upper West Side from the village, playing wow. that song over and over again, the things we that... did when we were young because that I didn't yeah. get stuck by a car, but I was obsessed with it. And just to That's... give people perspective, um, uh -huh. it was how, you know, decades later that I was introduced to you yes. at a Todd show and I put uh -huh. together your voice with mm -hmm. that song, but I feel like I've been connected with you since the Yeah, 80s. well, I mean, you know, it's funny too, because the, the, the world, as, as we go through life, it just keeps getting smaller and smaller. I was in the dressing room with my keyboard player, a gentleman by the name of Lloyd Landisman, and he's a great guy. Um, and I mentioned that I was doing this with you, and uh, asked him and he if knows I me? said, you, well, he knows, he knows Adam. <gasps> no kidding. And he's close with Adam's dad. Oh my God. Let me write yeah. him down. Well, I know, I know who he is because he plays with, that's wild. Yeah. And, and, and he went on to tell me how famous Adam's dad is. Dad was. Well, that's my father-in-law. Yeah, who, brown eyed girl. He, he wrote, played guitar on Brown Eyed Girl and got paid fifty dollars and never got a piece of that copyright. And he was the diddy 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 diddy. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. I will tell him. Um, so your the past two years, I remember when lockdown started, and I said two weeks. I'm never going to be able to do this for two weeks. They've got to be kidding. <laughs> and it took years. And I think, you know, we've all been, everybody has been cheated out of something, mm -hmm. lost, you know, missed a graduation, missed a wedding, yeah. lost a loved one. Um, and it's been especially hard for musicians. For musicians, yeah. Who, whose business is performing in front of close knit crowds so yeah. but you're getting started again so how does yeah. that feel well i think i, I think just to, just to go back just a, a, a split second and it's not just hard on us uh financially um it, you know uh because it just your whole world is turned upside down like most of most people's lives were but it's also hard emotionally because as a musician and as a 
as a touring musician live, uh, you know, most of what I do these days is live because record sales are, are not pretty much non-existent. So it's all about live shows. Right. And, um, and then not, but not to have that, you know, that, that connection with your audience for a long period of time is so, it's so difficult. I didn't think it would, I, I didn't think it would affect me as much as it did. Luckily enough for me, I was able to do the odd show here and there. I did one of the first drive-in concerts in this country. Uh, it was like in May of 2020. It was like right after everything shut down. Uh, and this one venue in New Hampshire kind of took a, a, a page from a, something that they had done in Europe, which was drive-in concert, concerts. People watched you from their cars. Yes. They, uh -huh. they tuned and, in on the radio? On a I'm frequency. sorry? They tuned in on a frequency on a radio? Or they had- Both. They, yeah, both. They had a, 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 a PA system in, the, in a parking lot. And also you could tune to um, uh, a station on your FM dial and, and listen to it in your car. It was a little strange, but it was just, it was so good to be performing, you know? You do it, now, you do it however you can, right? Yeah. Now, now, a lot of people did, you know, live streaming and Zoom concerts and stuff like that. I, I you know, I had a problem with, with playing to a camera, you know? Uh, and hoping that people were interested in not, you know, picking their teeth or cooking or uh, or doing whatever they do. Um, so, so that that connection with an audience was just so it was so it's so integral to my existence yeah. that um, it, just to be getting back to it now is right. it's really it's because people give you energy, you know. Yes. It's yeah. it's there's something. Well, I don't have to explain. Um, yeah. So you're getting back to it. You're doing your utopia. You've been yes. playing with Todd Rundgren for. Yes. 45 years. 45 years. Mm -hmm. That's just nuts. Not just Todd, but yes, I've been with, working with Todd for 45 Jet, years. Don Felder, Meatloaf. Yeah, Blue Eyes to Call, Patty Smith, Patty <laughs> Smythe. Cheap Trick, um, uh, yeah, yeah, Richie Sambora. Um, so yeah. a lot of longevity. And yeah. so if you've been playing with Todd for five year, for 45 years, so you started when you were about three? Three and a half. Three and a half. Yeah, yeah, that, that half a year makes a big difference. Because you look <laughs> young. And I have to think that all the music and keeps you feeling young and productive i mean i re we, you and i have a connection because we're always we, we just don't stop and i don't think that that's yeah. necessarily because we're we're alpha or out of principle it's this is our life blood yeah. right this kind mm -hmm. of keeps us alive so you're you're not only touring you have a a podcast coming out the unsung so and, so and there's, there's a, a record a last year yeah, so, I mean, there's, there, I, I don't know. I'm not entirely sure, she Shelley. We, you know, we talk all the time, and I'm, uh, and I'm constantly fascinated at, at the amount of projects that I have going on at any one time, like you, and, um, and so, uh, um, about a two years, a year and a half ago, um, I was up in Woodstock. Uh, rehearsing for uh, actually it was a little over two years ago I was up in Woodstock rehearsing with Todd for a tour and we rehearse in this um, uh, 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 a place that used to be Utopia Video um, that housed for a long time uh, a radio station called WDST which is Woodstock's radio station so uh, radio station up in in the uh, Woodstock area um, the, the general manager of the station, great guy, Joel Simon, a uh, big fan of mine, said, hey, if I can ever do anything for you down the road, just let me know. A year later, I'm talking to my manager, Scott Kushner, who was up in Woodstock uh, vacationing. And I said, you know, the, the radio, Scott comes from the radio world. I said, you know, Joel Simon down at WDST, um, he mentioned that uh, if there was anything that he could ever do for me, you know, just give him a call. Scott said, are you kidding me? You're going to have a radio show. He had a meeting with um, 
with Joel uh, a couple of days later. And I have, for the past year and a half, I've had a radio show every Sunday night. It's called It's My World and Welcome to It. It's on WDST. We're on eight stations across the country. We're in Santa Fe, Abilene, Texas, uh, Bowling Green, Kentucky, Bangor, Maine, um, Roanoke, Virginia. Um, it's a great hour of radio and, uh, I could not be happier doing that. So I have this radio show that right. I I've tuned in and I, and I text you while it's going and I go, yes, I you like do. And song. you comment, don't and like you this say, song. why are you playing like this song? <laughs> I why are you like playing this song? But it's not actually, you're not in the studio right at that time. And then when I realize, always like walking his dog and I'm commenting on these, all these songs. <laughs> but okay. So, so I've along, got along with that. Show. Right. And, and along with that, um, both Scott Kushner and, and, and I uh, had discussions about the possibility of putting a television series together about a working musician who is, um, you know, he plays with other people, yet he has a solo career and uh, songwriter, singer, and uh, he has a family. And um, gee, wouldn't it be nice to do some kind of, you know, TV pilot like that? Um, we brought in a, a gentleman by the name of Michael Simon, uh, director, uh, who's done tons of video, uh, worked at MTV for the longest time, did the story, uh, VH1 Storytellers for uh, a bunch of years. And, uh, and so the three of us got together. We came up with the idea of um, instead of doing a television um, series or pilot or try to try to sell something like that which is extremely difficult you would know because you're hollywood so you know how hard Barely. it is to get those things to do pitch meetings so we decided we were going to do a podcast and um and we came up with this premise of um of, of that's loosely based on my life how you the juxtaposition between life on the road and being a parent and being away but you know, still taking care of your family. Um, the fictional character, whose name is Alec, um, actually has a heart attack on stage. And I'm fine, though. Um, and and, and his, his grown children have to now take care of him. Um, and it's just, it, it's, it's a hilarious romp through parenthood and the music industry. And it's, it, it's a, it's a, I guess it's a it's a comedic podcast that debuts on March fifteenth okay. called Unsung. Okay. Any links to that we'll provide. If anybody yeah. wants to tune in, yeah. I can't wait. Um, and the, you you just make music constantly with our friend in common, Phil Thornelli, who introduced yeah. us. So you're still putting out records and. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, uh, um, the last record that I did before before this one I did in 2021 the last one I did was in 2014 the last proper record I did and Phil and I uh, uh, co-wrote some songs on that one and I had gone to London uh, to uh, do some work or, or just as a vacation and I went to see Phil and Phil said um, when's the next Chasm Sultan record coming out and I was like I don't know. He you said, well, do, do you have any, I do, do you have any ideas? Do you have any, you know, and, and anything you're working on? I played him a couple of, uh, of, of ideas and he said, great. So let's start. I'm going to put a beat together and you know how Phil is. He's, he's just like, just full. Uh, he's just, Oh, he's inspired 24 seven. Yeah. yeah. And he is inspiring as well. So, um, so we, we sat down and all of a sudden I started, you know, this record that Phil produced, which was a little different from me because um, I usually do everything by myself for the most part. Um, but, uh, but I, I handed over the reins to Phil and, um, and allowed myself to get out of my comfort zone. Um, and I'm very, very proud of that record. It's all co-writes between myself and Phil. Uh, it's with Casim 2021. Yeah, it's, it's on Deco. Album. It, yeah, it's on Deco Records, um, Deco Entertainment. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, that's, it's been a little difficult trying to um, promote because of the, 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 prop, the problems in, in doing live shows over the last year, right. year and a half. 
So it's just starting to come back. And yeah. I'm very, very pleased about God that. God willing, you know. Yeah. God willing. Um, and so, so Phil yeah. is also, you know, he's very, he's got that Todd Rundgren thing happening. Mm-hmm. He's obsessed with Todd's music. Yeah. And is that well, how he found you in the first, I mean, you've been, how is it touring with the same within the same band for 45 years? Um, you know, uh, the, I mean, the one thing about Todd and, uh, and working with him, um, and that used to com- completely frustrate me. And, uh, and I would, to the point of, uh, of you know, just get, not angry, but, you know, like, why would somebody do that? But the thing about Todd is he never does the same thing twice, you know? Um, well, for instance, we we had a record in 1978 called Adventures in Utopia. Um, and that record, uh, I, I believe it was 78 or 79, that record uh, did very, very well for a band like Utopia. We sold nearly a half a million records and had a hit on it, uh, a song called Set Me Free. And um, a, a, and it was really well received. Right. So it was how a that, big hit. Yeah. So how that record started is is interesting, too. It's it's that I think Roger, uh, Roger Powell, Willie Wilcox and myself said, you know, Todd, why can't we write a hit record? Because Todd is always on the fringe. Um, and he said, fine, you want to write a hit record? Let's take a look at what the top 10 hits are on Billboard and we'll just rewrite those songs. So whatever the top 10 hits were in that time period, probably a month or two in 78, um, Todd sat down and rewrote like uh, more than a feeling, um, which is there's a song on adventures, which is very much like more than a feeling. Um, and and, you know, much to his credit, he just has a knack for doing stuff like that. Um, the record was was extremely successful. And when we uh, when it came time after the touring behind that record, when it came time to do the next Utopia record, we gathered in Woodstock, uh, and I remember driving up and saying, oh, this is going to be great. We're going to make another record. It's going to put us over the top. And we get to Woodstock, and, uh, and we're like, for the first day of recording the, the follow-up record to our big record, and uh, uh, the three of us said to Todd, okay, well, what are we going to do on this record? He said, well, I've already recorded four songs. We're going to do a Beatles tribute record. Um, and we're like, excuse me, um, what do you mean? He says, well, yeah, I figured what we do is we take, uh, our favorite Beatles songs and rewrite them. And that's what we did. And that record is called to face the music. Looking back, it's a very interesting record. Um, it's, it, it's, it's a very tongue in cheek album. It didn't do well at all, but. And you have to give him credit for just experimenting. You uh, know- that is- Shelly, that is that is where he is. He surpasses everyone. But but can you tell him, please? You know, I've been since since I've met you, you've been so gracious. And every time Todd comes to town, you put me on the list and I come see him. And sometimes he plays Hello, It's Me in six, eight. In six, uh-huh. eight time, like a waltz, and it drives me crazy. It's like just yeah. give the people what they want, please. This is yeah. Well, it, you I'm, see, but you see, that's the whole thing. That's the whole point. You've hit you. You've hit the nail on the head. The whole point is Todd's philosophy, and if I may, his philosophy is the people should want what I do. It's not about me pleasing you. It's about me finding the muse within myself and finding what what motivates me and that's what should please you well it does does, that make sense it just doesn't please me in three quarter or six eight but you know it's it's wonderful because you get to to tour with him and let's face it i mean he's an icon he's a legend and then you get to go on the road and do your own thing and you don't have to listen to anybody and you're and you're doing it so um we never even said what you do but i mean everybody knows and i'll say it in the preface of the blog is you you're you play bass i am a bass player uh but i'm also a guitar player yeah i mean you and you play piano and you sing Mm -hmm. amazing but you once told me this really cute story about how you started playing bass and Uh i didn't forget it and 
Do you know what story I'm telling? I'm yeah. Talking about? Okay, can mm -hmm. you tell that again? Yeah. Sure. Um, I, I was four. I was about thirteen at the time, uh, maybe thirteen and a half. And um, the uh, I grew up on Staten Island, still live on Staten Island. And uh, uh, they started building all these row houses, uh, like a couple blocks away from where my parents' house was. And uh, and there was this influx of people from Brooklyn to Staten Island because Staten Island was the country. Um, and uh, and then uh, these. Two guitar player brothers, uh, the Rayo brothers, they moved in a couple blocks away. I went to school, uh, to middle school with the younger brother, John, and he was a really, really good guitar player. So in class, he said, you know, me and my brother were going to start a band. You want to be in our band? And I said, yeah, sure, I'll be in your band because he was really good. Uh, and I said, he said, well, what do you play? I said, I play guitar. He said, well, we don't need another guitar player. We need a bass player. I said, I play bass. But meanwhile, I, I, I didn't play bass. Dance. But I, wa I wanted, you don't say no. You say yes you to know anything. That. You say yes to everything. everything. So um, I took the, the, the guitar that my dad bought me a couple of Christmases before. I went to 48th Street in Manhattan and I sold it. And I bought a bass guitar and I became the bass player in, in this band. And, uh, but I, I didn't have an amplifier. <laughs> about a year later, I was about, I was 14 then. And uh, this, uh, this friend of theirs, the friend of the brothers had just bought a brand new bass amp and, uh, and he had a brand new bass guitar too. Um, and they fired me. And they threw me out of the band because I didn't have an amplifier. And I'll never forget Shelly, I went home uh, I walked the three blocks from their house because we rehearsed it there in their basement. I walked from their house to my mom, mom's, uh, my parents' house, uh, and I got in the door and I just I lost it. I just started crying uh, that they they fired me. I couldn't believe it. Can you believe they fired me? They let me go because I didn't have an amplifier. I'll show them. And you did may I say? Yeah. Well, you know they're they're good guys. I, I, I'm still friendly with them, and uh, but I was determined. I was I was so determined to to be good at, at at what it was that I knew my life's path was. You know, I wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna half measure it. You know, I was going to go full hog. I, that that's okay. it. I didn't want to hear about anything else. Well, so I, yeah. I think sometimes those kind of stories um, are failures. Not that you, that was a failure, but our rejection, whatever. Um, we almost learn more from them and they mm -hmm. fire us up. I think mm -hmm. if you come up in the business and never have anybody say no, you don't do the work. I mean, I was writing songs for 10 years and getting album cuts never a big single for 10 years, you know, mm -hmm. making, an, uh, making a quasi living because back then physical copies sold and we got paid on those. But I felt like everybody around me was having big hits, singles, except right. me. And, and I felt like by the time I hit and got my single, I had done so much work to get better at my craft. And right. I remember there were some colleagues who got hot really quickly. And some of it was talent and a lot of it was luck and timing. And they didn't have, they didn't do the work. Yeah. To get good at yeah. it. Yeah. Look, it never happened again. And and I and I'm still around 30 years later, and you're still around. And I mm -hmm. I just think that those kind of stories shape us and when we look back we really need to thank them as i believe yeah. you're doing and so did you get the amplifier because at some point you had to get i did I, and, I, okay, I, so I did want to um well then you know it was just a question of uh, of you know just beating the pavement just pounding the pavement just making phone calls making connections really not not much different than what it's like today wow. you know? showing up. and yeah just showing up and you know and not stopping before the miracle happens you know and and it's just never that could be the Excuse name of your book. Not, don't stop before the miracle happens, happens. Yeah. 
Well, that's a that's that's a a phrase that a lot of people are aware of. I never, you know, before. I never heard it. I'm uh, going to Google it. Is that a real okay. phrase? Is that a real yeah, phrase? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but we won't get into that. Um, it, so so the, the, whole, the whole point is, that, and the, the interesting thing is that Todd once told me, uh, just not, not to quote Todd, but uh, he told me once a long, 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 long time ago, he said, he said, yeah, that's all well and good, you know, keeping, you know, banging your head against the wall and always, you know, and handing in demos and getting rejected, but keeping handing in but you got to know when to stop, you know? So, so I don't know. I mean, so it, was he you know, giving that advice to you or was he saying that in general? I forget. We, we, it, it, it was so long ago, but it was a conversation about, you know, uh, maybe this might not be the right thing for you to be doing, you know, for, like a musician or a songwriter or something that, uh, but then you played there, with him for decades, so that doesn't make any no, sense. No, 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 no. He didn't, he wasn't referring to me. Oh. He wasn't. No, it was just an in general conversation. Oh. It was just an in, in, in general, like, well, you know, uh, when do you keep, you know, do you keep going and going and going? Um, and and I think his, his, his comment was, yeah, for sure, but just know when to stop, you know? Well. Some people don't. I've been having this conversation a lot lately. And I talked to a young person the other day at a party. He's like 20 and he used to make beats. <laughs> That's what they call it now. They don't write songs yeah. and make beats. And he didn't, he hasn't been doing anymore. He moved into sort of management or behind the scenes. And I said, I'm just curious, why did you stop making, you know, beats? And he said, you know, there was just so many people better at it than I was. And I said, That's a blessing that he yeah. knew that. Because, right, exactly. Because I think, you know, why did we keep going? If we didn't keep going, was there no miracle? Like if a tree falls in the forest, do we hear it if we're not in the forest? I, I, I had enough fire in me and you have enough fire in you and belief in yourself and visions. I'm working on a new project now with my friend Eve. And I say to her, we're gonna keep going because I see this. Yeah. I can mm -hmm. see this happening, I could taste it. But I wonder if there are people who, who aren't going to happen, who, who don't have that gift, who believe that they do and are going to keep going and going and going and just wear themselves out. I don't know. Yeah. In I, you know, I, I, I don't know. I think that, uh, I think the, that it, it, you, you really have to listen to the universe. You know, I think the universe gives you signs and hints along the way and and if you're not um if you're not open to that if you're just like you know so laser beam focused that you can't hear or think of anything other than than what's in front of you and you're not listening to hear um you know uh, i i don't know i mean uh, we're we're very very lucky people i consider myself one of the most blessed people on the on the planet yeah um you know and i think that uh that remaining um, uh, teachable is is really important too, you know. So, I, you know, Shelley, I I don't know. I mean, if if I was if I was my age and I still hadn't gotten into a band or I still I would, or I was still I was still I was still losing <laughs> gigs, you know, because I didn't have an amplifier. <laughs> it might have been oh time God. for me to find something else right. to do. Right. Oh my God. Well, I told you that this 35, 40 minutes goes by very mm -hmm. quickly. Yeah. And yeah. so much more to talk about. And I just want to mention you have a beautiful family, beautiful children, beautiful yeah. grandchildren. How many grandchildren yeah. now? I have four grandchildren. Yes. Unbelievable. And, uh, and I have a, a wonderful girlfriend. And um, I have, uh, you know, Susie. She's great, and um, and, uh, and and my mom um, and Pete, my rescue dog, is he's a love, and um, and, and my um, um, my mom, mom uh, yeah, and actually, funny enough, um, I had a a a a, 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 a house emergency uh, just before I left to come out here, and um, and I I lost one of the showers in my house, so I had to shower over my mom's house for the last five days, so. But Ernestine is doing great. Yeah. And she'll be, she'll, she's 92 now. 
Very lucky. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a very lucky guy. Very lucky guy. Very, very lucky. There's so much more, but- And, and, I'm and, sure. and, and forget, about, forget about all that luck. Just to know you is, <laughs> I, I consider myself just, uh, what a, how blessed am I to, ha to have you in my life? And I'm serious about that, Shelly. I really I, mean that you, I, you serve, <laughs> you serve a real purpose in my life. You really do. And, and you mine, I think we, you know, definitely relate on yeah. the paths that we've taken. And, um, and I'm, I'm also so happy we've met and I hope you make new friends from this chat. We'll post your the podcast link and your website, and I hope people go to your website and find a show to go to and and stay healthy yeah. and, and out of yeah. life's way. And fingers crossed. Yeah, I think um, you you have to have hope. If you don't have hope, there's not much to live for. Radical know? hope. Yeah, and uh, and thank you. Never it's stops. Thank you so much for having me uh, on on sure. on this uh, blogcast. Or it's I'm not blogcast. sure what you call it, but not quite a blog, not quite not, a not quite a podcast, but a blogcast. Yes. And uh, and I just love you with all my heart, Shelly. As do I you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Have fun. Have a good show. Thank you. <laughs>